Hey everybody, Do Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Zui Soroku, the fan disc material from the first game, or the extras added to the PS3 version called Stories of the Shinsengumi. Today is our last video with Hajime Saito, Memories of Love Part 8, which hopefully will be a lovely epilogue. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Memories of Love, Saito 8, October 1870. After the war, Saito becomes a retainer for the Aizu and moves to Tonami in the Tohoku region with the protagonist. One day after they had settled down, he appears with some alcohol from a neighbor and insists they drink it together. Are we going to get Stinko? Ah, that was a nice moment. That was so cute. He went and turned to look at me until we called him Hajime instead of Saito. <laughs> that was cute. I do not need a sword to be a warrior. What makes a warrior is his heart, not his birth or his weapon. Wise words. Although a sword does make them a little more impressive. He looked up at the snow falling softly around us. Saito's time with the Shinsengumi and with the Aizu had opened his eyes, not just to the world but to himself. He had never been timid, but he had a new sort of confidence now. Undoubtedly, his trials were not over, but I knew that whatever path he took, his heart would show him the way. We would be happy together. When we marched off to retake Shirakawa Castle, Nagakura, Harada, and Heisuke had appeared to fight beside us. With their help, we managed to defeat Kazuma. June, 1869. The war ended at last, and the former shogunate's forces found themselves on the losing side. Unfortunately, the Aizu domain had proved an especially powerful thorn in the side of the Imperial Army, and they were punished severely. As a result, the Aizu were relocated to the northeast Tonami region. They invited Saito to join them as part of the domain. He accepted, and we began our life together with the Aizu domain in Tonami. It wasn't a life of wealth and luxury, but it was ours, and we were learning to enjoy it. We can be happy as long as we're together. In any event, being by his side made me happier than anything else could have. October 1870 The trees were putting on their autumn colors that peaceful afternoon. I was still calling him Saito. <laughs> he wants to be called Hajime. Memories of Love, Part 8 May 1869 I was next to the stove, mending clothes. I heard the door open. I'm home. I tucked my needles into the pincushion and walked toward the entrance to greet him. Okairi? Welcome home. Wasn't it cold out there? Ah, seeing him with short hair and his, uh, Japanese clothes. I heard it might snow, so make sure you bundle up, okay? I'm fine. I'm not cold. There you go again. Even the neighbors are starting to get worried about you. Every time you go outside, you're barely wearing anything. You exhibitionist, you. That was when I noticed he was holding something. What's that? Is it sake? One of our neighbors gave it to me. He asked me to drink it with you. So, it was a gift? Why would he say to drink it with me, though? I don't even drink. Uh, well... Is it an engagement gift? It seemed like a normal, honest question to me, but Saito blushed. What was going on? Had I said something strange? Oh, you meant that he just wanted you to drink it with me in the room? That's a little strange, but okay. No, it was quite clear that it was for you and I to drink together. But I told you, I can't really hold my sake very well. I, I know, but I must drink this with you. Okay, now it's getting a little weird. What is going on? There was something awkward about his posture. I wasn't sure what that meant. Are you trying to roofie me? Saito had always been a man of few words, so discerning his thoughts were never easy, but he was acting especially suspicious. Had something happened? So, I guess you really want to drink it, huh? E yes Okay, just give me a minute to get ready. How do you get ready to drink? I know how much you love sake. It was really nice of him to give that to you. Saito loves sake? I didn't know that. He never went with the guys to Shimbara when they went drinking. It looks like it's going to be cold out tonight. Do you want me to warm it up for you? No, it's fine. But won't it be too cold? Maybe cold sake is good. No, everything's fine. Just pour some in the cup. Uh, okay? 
I did as he asked and filled the cup. Saito watched me pour, looking oddly uncomfortable. Saito and I have been living together for some time, but even before then, we had been housemates of a sort at the Shinsengumi, so in many ways our relationship had not changed a great deal. He had never been a man to wear his feelings on his sleeve, and for the most part that hadn't changed. Okay, all done. Here you go. Thank you. He took the cup from my hand and lifted it to his lips. What about me? But instead of drinking it, he only took a small sip. Was something wrong? I hadn't poured much. I'd seen him drink more than that in a single gulp. Oh, oh no, was he sick? My thoughts were cut short, however, when he held out the half-filled cup to me. You drink too. Um, that's nice of you, but I told you I can't drink. Am I pregnant or something? How many times was he going to make me say it? I know, but I need you to drink this. This is really suspect. Why? It's just sake one of our neighbors gave you, right? Does it taste funny or something? Out of nowhere, he blushed. Is there an aphrodisiac in it? No, nothing like that. It's normal sake, but also not. He fidgeted and mumbled something under his breath that I couldn't hear. Finally, he lowered the cup and looked into my eyes, his expression serious. You're going to have to feed it to me mouth to mouth. Chizuru, you... you look like me, yes? I felt my eyes go wide. I thought it would be pretty clear by now. Why was he bringing that up now? What was I going to say? Of course I do. Of course I do. He relaxed visibly. I... I see. He nodded and blushed again. But why are you asking me that? Does it have something to do with the sake? He looked down at the cup in his hand and fell silent. Then, finally, he seemed to make up his mind. I cannot say this sober. Let me have a little more. Oh, sure, go ahead. I'd never seen him so nervous. What on earth was he trying to tell me? He swallowed the rest of his sake in a single gulp and let out a sigh. Of course, the one time how I wished to be drunk, it eludes me. <laughs> it does take quite a bit to get you drunk, doesn't it? Would you like another? No, I could drink the whole bottle and feel nothing. I'm too nervous. Saito set the cup down at his feet. Oh? He squared his shoulders and looked into my eyes. Today, one of our neighbors asked me what exactly my relationship is to you. Okay? I did not know how to answer him. We have not had a wedding, so we are not man and wife, nor have we explicitly promised our futures to one another. But we care for one another, and we live together. So, that's what I told him. His reply surprised me. He said it would be unpleasant for you if our relationship remains ambiguous and forced this sake upon me. <laughs> okay, that just sounds like a really odd series of events. <laughs> and the way he worded that, to force this sake upon him. Alright. His explanation was awkward, but I thought that perhaps I could see what he was trying to say. If he was trying to make our relationship less ambiguous, then that meant... Um, I'm sorry if I'm getting this wrong, but... Are you trying to say the sake is supposed to be like the sake they drink at weddings? In response, Saito's face turned bright red and he nodded. Aww. At last, I understood why he was so desperate to make me drink it. Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Well, it doesn't mean anything if he didn't tell you in the first place. <laughs> I rushed to pour him another cup. Once he had taken a sip, he held out the cup to me and I took it. There was no ceremony beyond the sake, since there was no one there to witness it. But even so, taking this step was no small thing. All I had to do was drink the sake, and Saito and I would become husband and wife. He looked even more nervous than I did. I closed my eyes. And took a sip. Man, this is even faster than eloping. I felt the sweet liquid tickle down my throat, warming my body as it went. Ugh! <coughs> I wasn't accustomed to drinking sake, even in such small amounts. Are you alright? He rubbed my back gently, his brows knit in concern. Y yes I'm fine. I coughed one or two more times, then lifted my head back up to look into his eyes. So, we're husband and wife now, right? The moment the words crossed my tongue, I felt my voice waver. It wasn't as though anything would really change, but 
There was no denying that our relationship had taken a step forward. Yes, I suppose we are. <laughs> I don't think he's ever blushed so much in his life. The words appeared to embarrass him, too, and he almost seemed to shrink a little. And there is something else I told myself I had to tell you today. Uh, okay? He poured himself another cup and drank it. Let me have another. This takes a great deal of courage. Oh, of course. Here you are, Saito. I poured him another cup of sake, and he drank it down in a single swallow. Nothing ever seemed to rattle Saito, and yet now he needed liquid courage to tell me... something? And hadn't he just said that he was too nervous to feel the effects of sake? Needling him would hardly help, though, so I sat silently and waited. At last, he seemed to manage to pull himself together and reached out to take my hand. Hmm? Some things change with the passage of time, and some do not. Once I told you that I believe in things that do not change. Yes, I remember. But there are some things in this world that must change. Yes? What was he saying? It was beginning to make me nervous. Now you and I are husband and wife, right? Right. But you still call me Saito. Oh, this is all about him wanting me to call him by his first name, that's all? And there are things that should change, and things that should not. I think it's obvious that this is one of the things that is meant to change. He had said it in a strange roundabout way, but... <laughs> what you're saying is that you want me to call you something else? He nodded silently. But I've called you Saito for so long. What would I even call you? Oh, come on, duh. What else could you possibly call him? Why not my first name? I would call you by yours as well. So... Hajime, then. The moment I spoke his name, Saito's, uh, Hajime's shoulders straightened. <laughs> A warm red... <laughs> What, did you not think this through, Saito? A warm red rose to his cheeks. Even I could tell that it wasn't because of the alcohol. He looks like I just told him I'm pregnant or something. He was silent for a long moment and didn't seem to be able to meet my gaze. Your voice was so quiet, I could barely hear you. Could you say it again? Huh? Uh, oh, um, okay. Hajime. His body stiffened at the sound of his name. But... Ooh. One more time. You spoke so fast I could barely hear you. Could you say it a little more slowly? <laughs> oh, this is so adorable. Hajime, you heard it just fine, didn't you? Your face is all red. N no, I really couldn't hear you. The redness is due to the sake, entirely. <laughs> you are horrible at excuses. Besides... I think it's best that you get used to using my name as quickly as possible. <laughs> well, I guess that's true. I called him Saito for so long that Hajime feels strange. So long as it made him happy, though, I would keep doing it. Chizuru, could you say my name again? I want to hear it. He took my hand. His voice was almost pleading. The tips of his ears had turned a powerful shade of red. <laughs> they really have in this picture. Every fiber of my being felt warm and happy. This was where I belonged. Oh, I feel like he's about to attack her right then and there. <laughs> just for saying his name. Oh, that was just too, too adorable. Man, why was Saito so much cuter in this stuff than he was in the main game? I'm so happy, though. It's so much more rewarding. I mean, I loved who he was in the first game, but it's just that this gave us all the moments that we didn't get to have in the original game, you know? So I'm really happy about that. This has all been just great so far. I just wish that Kazuma had a little bit more since he was so gypped in the first game. But I might go ahead and reread Kazuma's route when Kyoto Wins comes out. When Kyoto Wins comes out, I'm going to read all the new guys. And like I said, maybe Kazuma. We'll see about everything else when it actually comes out. I need to do a little bit more research on some things. But I don't really want to reread hours and hours of material that I've already read, you know? And plus, I think Rob is planning to read some of this on his channel, so maybe he'll end up reading the entire game. Original guys and all. Or maybe we'll end up getting a new member of our team, the Otome Alliance. He might pick up some stuff. That would be pretty cool. You never know. Now we get to read his letter. 
a man of even fewer words than Kazuma. Let's see what he has written for us. Here we go, Saito's letter. My Lady Chizuru, have I surprised you by writing a letter now, after we've been together for so long? Perhaps it would be better for me to tell you this in person, but I find I have difficulty doing so. It is my fervent hope that this letter will allow me to portray my feelings accurately. I confess it may be rather long, but I hope you will read it through. Of course, I wouldn't miss a word. When first we met, I imagine you struggled to grasp what was happening to you. Fortunately, you didn't make a scene, and we were able to avoid any serious consequences. I was surprised to learn you had come all the way from Edo on your own, and during a time when the roads were far from safe. Surprised and impressed that you had such courage. For a time, I imagined that our life at the headquarters was stifling, but when you arrived, things were still rather peaceful. Not too long after you appeared, however, we found ourselves in battle after battle, and you saw far more blood than the lady should ever have to. But not once did you try to run. You faced every battle head on. Even if you were unable to fight yourself, you did your best to lift the rest of us up and make yourself an integral part of the Shinsengumi. And before long, Chizuru, I found I had fallen for you. Because you spoke to us without disassembling, your words easily found their way to our hearts. When I found myself shrouded in doubt, your voice and your honest eyes helped me to see my way through the fog. You said that I was strong, that I knew what was best for me and refused to compromise, no matter what others said. But I think those words could easily describe you as well. Indeed, I feel that you may be even stronger than I. The more I think back, the more I realize just how much you've been there to lift me up when I fell. The reason I can walk the path I've chosen is because I have you to walk it with me. I refused once, but you accepted my weakness and claimed you would stay with me regardless of it. And that was when I swore to myself that whatever the cost, I would stay with you. If I have ever been truly strong, it was that moment. Thank you, Chizuru. I'm glad to have met you. I apologize for bringing you to this frozen land now that the war is at an end. I am happy that you came, but I feel I am only putting you through further hardship. No, I'm still just happy as long as I'm with you anywhere. For my part, so long as you're by my side, I can endure any pain. Same here. I want us to share everything, the good, the bad. I want us to live life together. Chizuru, you and only you are all that I need. Please, no matter what the future may hold, do not forget that fact. That was all that I wished to tell you. Huh. <sighs> I wish he had actually said the words I love you, though, but that's okay. It was implied. <laughs> ah, my dear Saito. You shall be missed. To be seen again only in other people's routes. For a time, anyway, at least. Well, anyway, next episode we shall be starting on Todo Heiske's route. So hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do you really signing out? Bye-bye, everybody.